Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for February 26, 2013. It's currently 9.17 a.m. And we have some interesting observations to go over this morning and a lot to talk about in case of storms. More than one, one that will impact the northern mid-Atlantic and one that I think will not. So uh, we have a lot to go through, so let's get to it. So first of all, this morning we have temperatures in the lower to mid-30s over the northern interior and upper 30s along the coast. Notice our dew points are already in the 20s and 30s here. Important observation here is that we have a marginally cold air mass, especially over the northern interior, but not a very dry one. You know, during the winter we've seen a lot of air masses where our dew points are in the single digits and teens. That leads to verga and evaporational cooling. This time, though, really we don't have that dry of an air mass. We have you know, pretty much a typical moderated polar air mass in place. And that's important with this upcoming forecast because uh, I have a snow map out, which I'm going to show. I went a little bit aggressive just because with ice, you can never be too aggressive uh, because it could create a lot of problems. But I'm not all that impressed with this cold air mass this morning. And uh, there really isn't a cold air mass being replaced here with this upcoming storm. So here we have the latest radar from the Penn State E-Wall website. And let's see if we can zoom out here. And you can see <clears throat> we have a, a plenty of rainfall definitely moving towards the uh, northern Atlantic. Uh, moderate to heavy rainfall, a nice swath being pulled from the Gulf of Mexico right towards the northern Atlantic. If you're in the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan areas, Long Island, much of New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, this is rain period. End of story. It's all rain. It's going to be a nice moderate to heavy rain tonight on through tomorrow morning into the early afternoon hours with temperatures in the 40s. No big deal. However, if you are in this location right here in northeastern Pennsylvania, extreme northern New Jersey or basically northern Sussex County, if you're in this portion of the Hudson River Valley, basically north of White Plains, and if you're in central and northern, especially northwestern Connecticut, this is a little bit more of a tricky forecast because you have a little bit of cold air locked in at the surface. And as you know, you don't need much freezing rain to create some problems uh, for your location. So here is the latest water vapor satellite picture. I want to show this to show, again, here's our negative NAO block that's a little bit further east than what we like. And as a result, here's our high pressure system shifting more towards the Canadian Maritimes, leading to more of an easterly wind, as you saw in the observations here. Go back here again, look, see all easterly winds here. This is transporting a marine air mass into the northern Atlantic, thus the rain. But over the northern interior, as you can see, we still have some cold air locking in. In fact, you can still see a little bit of a cage sign signature here. And you can see starting to uh, see the influence of the high latitude blocking over the northern Atlantic, over the uh, northern Atlantic, should I say, that is forcing this upper low, instead of moving, continuing to move northeast, is now moving more east. And that's going to lead to a redevelopment towards the coastal waters right around Long Island, and then the coastal low will eventually take over as the primary low once it gets into around the Gulf of Maine. So that's why it's pretty much a rainstorm for much of the northern Atlantic, but there is some potential for some ice over the interior. Now, taking a look at the latest European model guidance from the Penn State E-Wall website, you can see for this evening, here's our upper level load, getting ready to shift towards the coast. Here's a nice ridge in place still, so that's going to slow down the progression of our rainfall. But notice everything's being pushed to the east, and that's drawing in plenty of warm air. So, as we have this warm air drawing northward, it's going to change everything over to rain for almost everybody in the northern mid-Atlantic, aside from a few northern interior locations. Then as the storm lifts through, it starts to shift more towards the coast. Pretty much the upper level low jumps towards, let's say, around uh, Buffalo and Syracuse. And then starts to jump towards the New England coast by the time we get into uh, Thursday morning. So here's our low pressure system again. Tonight brings the rain. The secondary low starts to redevelop right around Long Island. By that time, though, we have plenty of warm air surging in. And as a result, we end up with a rainstorm. So here is the forecast for tonight on through tomorrow. Again, most of the location can expect moderate to heavy rain around uh, 0.75 to 1.25 inches of rain. 
A little bit further north, we're going to have a little bit more rain-snow mix, maybe a little bit of freezing rain, a trace to two inches of snow, a trace to five hundredths of an inch of ice. Use some caution tomorrow morning. It's going to be a little bit slippery. As we move even further north, let's say around north-central Connecticut, northeastern Connecticut, uh, portions of the Hudson River Valley right around Poughkeepsie, and let's say right around uh, Wilkes-Barre and uh, Scranton, we're looking at anywhere from two to four inches of snow here. Now, my main concern here is the ice. I think most locations are going to be around five hundredths to a tenth of an inch of ice. There could be an isolated location here or there, especially if that cold air gets trapped, where you get up to a quarter of an inch of ice. And it could become a major icing problem for a few isolated locations where you get that cold air trapped in. And when I say cold air, we're talking about 31, 32 degrees. So the margin of error here is pretty slim. So pretty much if we just get that temperature up to 33 a little bit faster, then this becomes a very minor event. However, if we get stuck at 31 and 32 for an extra hour or two, that ice could pile up very quickly. So we're going to have to watch that very carefully tomorrow morning. Even further north, that cold air is a little bit deeper. You're going to look at 3 to 6 inches of snow. The faster you change over to sleet and freezing rain, the lower the snowfall total. The higher the snowfall, the longer it remains snow in these locations, the lower the ice accumulation. So pretty much what you want what, what you want to wish for is snow. Six inches of snow and reducing your ice threat. By about midday Wednesday, midday morning Wednesday, this precipitation will all change over to rain. It will wash away and our temperatures will jump into the 40s and much of this will be melted away. But tomorrow morning is going to be a very dicey situation in these locations here as far as travel is concerned. So use some caution. Now, once this storm leaves, there's a lot of talk about a potential storm later on. Now, for the rest of this upcoming week, uh, for let's say Thursday and Friday, Thursday afternoon and Friday, we're dealing with dry conditions. But there's a lot of talk later on in the forecast period of a storm that could potentially develop over the northern mid Atlantic, or at least the mid Atlantic coast. Now, I want to be very clear here. From Thursday on through, let's say, about Sunday. Uh, dry conditions are in place. Marginally cold air is in place. We're talking about temperatures pretty much near normal in the upper 30s to mid 40s. Not really a big deal as far as temperatures are concerned. No, no uh, extremes either way. Tranquil conditions can be expected. By early next week, everyone's kind of keeping an eye on this disturbance right here. And why? Well, it forms an L along the coast and everyone automatically thinks of snowstorm. Not exactly. Now look, you see this here? This is called a negative NAO pattern. It, it is one version of it, okay? Clearly you have above normal heights around Greenland and over northeastern Canada, and you have below normal heights over the northern Atlantic and western Atlantic. The problem is look at the trough axis here. This is way too far east. I talked about this in the premium discussions and I'm bringing this to public because this has to be explained to kind of limit all this hysteria. The access, the, or, the orientation of these troughs and ridges going all the way back to Japan are completely thrown off to support a winter storm. Why? Because everything's too far east. You don't have to just change the trough axis of what's happening over North America, but also much of the Northern Hemisphere. So you have to have a drastic change in this weather pattern in order to support this storm moving up the coast. So it, it's not just, you know, oh, well, the models are going to trend. It's, it's not a matter of trending. This ridge cannot be here. This trough cannot be here. We've been through this before, ladies and gentlemen. So this is why I'm kind of um, putting my foot down here. That what we need here is not just a little shift. We need a drastic change in the entire 500 millibar pattern. This has to be further west. This has to be out here. And this has to be right around Idaho and, and uh, Montana. If it's not, I don't care what model you use. I don't care how many ensembles you use. This storm, while it may produce some nice snow for Virginia, is not going to move north. It's not going to become a major powerful winter storm for the northern Mid-Atlantic. Possibly for the southern Mid-Atlantic? Yeah, it is a threat. 
but not for the northern mid-Atlantic. Not unless we see a wholesale change of this entire pattern and this ridge trough axis uh, positioning. So that is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. You can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter and Facebook. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there.